I recently escaped Blindside Studios and got the great pleasure in going down to Braintree to Luden Palazzoli to see Ian Peacock, where he showed me a rig that I clearly described in that video as something that didn't look like somebody's created it from their back bedroom when we were looking at art fault detection devices. I come back to the studios and looking down here, Gordon, it looks like you've created something that looks like in a back bedroom for a YouTube video. Well, yes, that's exactly it. And while you've been in the Italy of East Essex, as we do know Braintree, I've been back here uh, trying to answer the question we get asked a lot on the channel when it comes to AFDDs. It's never mind all that technical stuff on how they work, is people are rumouring that they use lots of power just sitting there all year quietly consuming power, and that's what we're going to look at today. However, they certainly do use some power, and we're going to come to that. I thought we'd just put that in the context before okay. we go there, because the other thing that people worry about that's also permanently connected, and everyone loves, and that's USB charging sockets. Ah, right, so that's what we've got down here. You're going to tell me what power that's using when it's not doing anything, yeah. or to compare it to the AFDDs. Now, if you want to see those AFDDs in action in the videos that I made with Ian down at Luden Palazzoli, we'll leave them in the eye above our heads, will yes, we? Yes, and I'll put it in the description as well below, but there's a lot of learning in there on the videos, and we're going to be installing more of them. Okay. Um, but first, Gary, let's have a look at the USB socket. So okay. at this uh, uh, MK base USB socket. I've got a Hameg power meter here as well. Okay, so it's not doing anything. We've got a small read in there anyhow on the machine. Tiny, 0.023 of a watt. Okay, so not very much. So I'm just gonna close our quick test. Okay, so okay, energy so is powered it? up uh, the USB socket and you'll see now we're dancing around at just about 0.1 of a watt, really. Okay, so almost so, nothing. Almost nothing, and that's mandated in uh, lots of regulations, the Energy Using Products Directive, that when products go asleep, there's a certain maximum amount of power uh, they can draw. Okay. And obviously, because it's not doing anything, that's gone to sleep. And yeah, so that's 0.1 of a watt, so I reckon that's about 22 pence a year. Okay, so that's... Yeah, insignificant, I would suggest. However, we, when I open up the panel with the AFDDs and I've got a panel at home full of them, mm -hmm. all those uh, all those lights are gleaming at me. Yeah. And that suggests it's using some energy. Well, look, before we get onto the lights on AFDDs, let's look at that other device you might have in the house. Well, okay. In the kitchen, think of those neon indicators. Oh, right, okay. Yeah. So let's see how much they That'd be interesting, won't it? See, well, because I've got several neon indicators on uh, fuse connection units for my fridge, which has been on for the 15 years I've lived in the property, yeah. as well as the dishwasher and things like that. So it'd be interesting, yeah. It's so always on. Has the neon indicator lasted that length yeah. of time? Well, it has, yes. They're all working still, yeah. That's all good. So we're on to the second socket now again. Yep. MK base range again. So MK base range, so just yeah, bring on that indicator there so you can see actually. Oh wow. Minus that, that's about point yeah, point two four of a watt. Okay, so I think I've been worrying about the wrong one, haven't I? I've been worried yeah. about the USB, I should have been worrying about the neons. Yeah, so there's a bit of a revelation. A neon indicator on a socket uses considerably more power than a USB charging socket that everybody's always been firing in the comments yeah. when we've featured them before that use lots of power. And in easy maths, it's double true, isn't it? There we go. Oh, Make it easy that, maths. Yeah. yeah, easy maths, I guess. Yeah. Okay, so, can we keep this theme going so on the maths? Uh, yeah, we'll call it yeah, 52 pence a year to run a neon indicator. Right, okay. Yeah. So I, can, I can double that power consumption as well by switching the other socket on. Oh, right, okay. So, yeah, so we, yeah <laughs> so, just prove your point. So, you've now turned the other one on so and we're now popped it up yeah, to. We're dancing around about half a watt. Oh, wow. So, just turn it back off for me so I can see both. Yeah, now pop them back on one at a time. Oh, you did two at a time. Of course you did. Yes. All right, okay, yeah. So, that's surprising. Yeah, it is. I was quite surprised by that, actually. <laughs> but because it, it, yeah, we all go USB, USB. Actually, no, don't don't have a combination of both. I would suggest. Yeah, that probably. Yeah. Well, technically, yeah, that's difficult. Would that comply with regulations then? Mm, yeah. Good question. Pushing, pushing the border. So what I've also built up here, Gary, is uh, the consumer unit we all love to see, and I've peppered it full of lots of people's uh, different AFDD devices and an RCBO. Again, just for a bit of context. So okay. I'll so just, uh, just like I say, for the record, obviously this is under control conditions. We sort of what we're doing so we don't recommend you build one of these at home and we're not in the back bedroom either so we're now going to liven up not an AFDD you're going to go for an RCBO first yeah we'll just track it at an RCBO I'll okay just, uh, drop those off switch all them off and that's the thinking behind that because we know they're full of electronic components yes yes particularly on the uh, type A yes yeah. as obviously things get more complicated the uh, yeah the old AC just used to have an iron core in there it was quite simple yeah, that resistor at the, at the AC, there's more electronics. Obviously, the B type and all those other ones have got more electronics in to monitor stuff. So, AC's got next to nothing in, but once we get to A, we get electronics and get more as we go F and B. Yes. Yeah, and obviously, okay. yeah, the minimum really we're thinking of now is A, unless you can find a 
a lot for all resistive. It's yeah. A type. It's A type. Yeah. So we're going to go. So let's just bring it in. So yeah, we can see it come on. So at the minute we've got that sort of standalone number. You're going to turn on. So oh, there is go. a bit. So yeah, a little bit in there. So yeah, so that's going to be about 0.12 of a watt if I take away the uh, the little number it was shown beforehand. Um, so yeah, that's again similar to a neon indicator. Yeah, for those. And that is an A type, isn't it? You confirm that was an A, yeah? Yes, that's an A, so it's not the neon indicator. Similar to the USB socket, so point, uh, point 0.12 of a watt, so that's about 26 pence a year. Okay. Yep. Yeah, it's, it's tiny money. Well, this is the one, isn't it? So you've got three, I think. You've got, got three different manufacturers. Three yeah, AFDDs, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this is the, Just yeah. buying them is expensive <laughs> bit. So you're going to tell me about running them. So we've got, if I look down there, we've got Luden, we've got... BG less Seco, and we've got a Wirelex one. Yes, we've got a Wirelex one, which is okay. yeah, Siemens technology, really. So let's, uh, yeah, let's let's have a look. Are we really inside a couple of these, haven't we? Yeah, there, there is a lot there. of electronics okay. in let's these. Let's have a little look then, see what we are. So we're going on with first of all the Luden Palazzoli so one. The Luden. So we've got a red light on there. What yeah. we jumped up to, and we're about 0 0.32 of a watt when I take away the uh, the small reading we had on the meter beforehand, okay. which is about 70 pence a year. And that's the largest number we've got so far. Yeah. So again, so we drop that one back out. This is the BG one. Repeat that on the BG, and we're getting a similar number, which is again seventy pence a year. Okay. No, no. Well, well, before we go there, let's just have a little discussion because we've looked inside one of these, haven't we? So we've been inside the Wirelex one, and you said to me you were amazed by the layers in there and the complexity. Was it a flexible, flexible, rigid circuit body? <laughs> yeah, that's technology. Yeah, you used to put in like missiles and stuff like that. that okay. Was, uh, <laughs> that was, uh, yeah. That's Did some... you? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, so when we've opened that one up and, and we, we took a deep breath, there was a lot of electronics in there. So I'm going to use a little bit of logic now. Yeah. There's probably a lot more electronics in there maybe than the first two. So we'd expect that to consume maybe more power. Yeah. You, yeah. Possibly. Could do. Okay. Well, let's, have a look. Right, let's have a look then. So I'm excited to see this because I've got some of these at home. Wow. All right. So we're on. So there we go. So that. The uh, yeah the Wirelex one which is such Siemens Ooh. technology is 0.5 of a watt so that's cost new Gary about one pound ten a year to run at home okay and I've got a f hmm. how many have you got I've got a feeling you know I've got four that are blanks yeah I've got a feeling I've left them up as well <laughs> well there you go <laughs> till tomorrow <laughs> okay and I'll knock them back off okay yeah so hmm yeah. it's, it's, it's yeah. I'm sure it's not it's not gonna uh, yeah send anyone into financial crisis but it is it is taking some energy there so just remind me the number for over a year for one of those it is uh, so yeah so the wirelex one yeah it's about a pound and then the, yeah the uh, the other two we've got there about 70 pence each and it costs you 26 pence for your rcbr anywhere and people are going to be <gasps> in these cost of living obviously that's because energy prices have gone up so much we're now at you know, we can, on that calculation, 25 pence a kilowatt hour. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah, a few years ago, we used to be at 10. Just, just, um, just, just, let's date it. We're 2022 April, and there's a price hike coming in October, isn't there? Since we recorded this video, the energy price cap for October has been announced, and for residential customers, price per kilowatt hour is going up to an amazing 52 pence a kilowatt hour. However, I wouldn't ever suggest you tamper with the safety devices that have been installed in a property because they are there for your safety and whatever small amount of power they use is worth it. Things you do want to worry about are things like these vampire devices that use a lot of power even when they're on standby. I've recently checked my install at home. I've got a Sonos surround system that has Alexa built in and that uses 20 watts of power while it's on standby, which adds up under the price cap to nearly £85 a year. We'll perhaps look at that in a future video, but while we're on the topic of energy, you might want to check out what I'm doing behind me in this curious setup with electricity meters.